स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेकंड लेक्चर दैट इज ऑन द चैप्टर नंबर टू दैट इज ऑन द एनर्जी स्टोरेज इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी सो अबाउट ब्रीफ अबाउट द एनर्जी स्टोरेज एंड द रिक्वायरमेंट्स दैट आर बीन रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द एनर्जी स्टोरेज इज इन द ईबीज एंड एच बीज ऑल्सो वी सो अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द बैटरीज दैट कैन बी यूज इन केस ऑफ द ईबीज एंड ऑल्सो इन केस ऑफ द एच बीज दैट इज हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स एज वेल so now we will discuss about the characteristic or we can say the specific energy of these batteries first we will see brief what are the main differences between those batteries and then we will start learning those batteries in very easy way or we can say we will see the working of those batteries how they can be used in our evs and which of the batteries that we are right now using in the evs and hvs and what are the basic problems right now that we are facing with those batteries that we will see in this chapter so let's start this video first here you can see the batteries the specific energy of those batteries has been shown you in a table right the theoretical and practical these two are the specific energies they are different which is the theory that says that this battery should theoretically give us the energy or we can say the specific energy in this much quantity but in actual or we can say in practical the value of those specific energy in some time will be lesser because of some type of the losses or because of the different types of the proper losses or we can say the insulation as well right also because of some impurities the problems in the discharge and charging of the batteries there are many problems that can create the practical specific energy lesser than the actual or theoretical energy first lead acid in that you can see the practical is around 50 watt hour per kg for nickel cadmium you can see 20 to 30 for nickel zinc you can see it is 90 nickel iron it is 60 nickel zinc chlorine that is 90 zinc bromide that is 70 silver zinc that is 100 but because of the higher cost of the silver we are not using that battery sodium sulfur gives us the 150 to 300 aluminum air gives us 300 nickel metal gives us 70 and hybrid gives us 150 the last one that you are seeing is the lithium ion battery right the lithium ion battery you are not seeing the practical value of the specific energy but we can say that the lithium ion battery is the most widely and most uh, time has been used in our electric vehicles because of the ease of the operation also the lithium ion battery gives us the best a uh, combination of the specific energy and specific power the cycle life of the lithium ion batteries is more compared to all other batteries it's not like that we are not using any other batteries but the most widely used battery from all of this is lithium ion battery so this was about the specific energies of the battery now let's see the batteries in detail what are the characteristics and what are the working of the batteries the first one is the lead acid battery right it is most widely known also you might have studied this battery in the previous semester as well again the lead acid battery is the most commonly used battery in the petrol and diesel engine vehicles right the battery with 12 volt rating is being generally used in most of the vehicles right in almost all the vehicles we can say in petrol and diesel engine right this battery is used for the electric components whenever the electricity is required such as in headlamps side lights etc etc all the electrical equipments can be run with the help of this lead acid battery now in the case of the lead acid battery we are seeing a simple diagram a schematic diagram which shows you two electrodes one separator and electrolyte which has been filled in our bucket right this is simply a one cell of the battery the rating of one cell is 2 volt we require six cells for a battery manufacturing this is how we get 12 volt battery when we use six cells of this lead acid battery now in the case of the lead acid battery both the electrodes are made from the lead one is pbo2 
and second is PB solid, right? Normal PB solid. The PbO2 is connected at the positive electrode and at the negative electrode PB is connected, right? So in this simply we are using the electrolyte that is H2SO4, right? Also we will have to keep one separator in between those two electrodes, right? The separator is a kind of a porous material from which the hydrogen and oxygen ions can pass or electrons can pass easily so that discharging and charging can happen easily right also in the case of the separator it helps to not keep the positive and negative electrode separating each other if they come in contact with each other then the battery will be short circuited and there will be a bigger problem right so during the discharging process you can see that the ions or you can say that the PB will be converted into PbSO4 right you can see that the because of the H2SO4 that is electrolyte which is connected that SO4 will be removed and the H2O that is water right the water will be generated from H2SO4 PB will be converted into PbSO4 right and the opposite effect will be generated during the charging effect. The H2SO4 will always be soluble or aqueous mixture of the electrolyte, right? Only H2SO4 will not have been used. The H2SO4 plus H2O mixture will be used. So if the battery is too much discharged, then the volume of H2O or we can say the quantity of H2O will be increased which we can say that the battery is in discharged condition for that we will top up the water depending on the specific gravity of the battery or we can top up the H2SO4 according to the requirement during the charging process right so this is simply how the chemical reactions work in all the batteries the working will be like similarly right the electrodes will change the electrolyte will change right there will be simple change but the working will always be similar right so in the detail you can see that working will be similar that discharging will happen like this and the opposite will happen during the charging process here you can see this is the charging process of the bat, uh, lead acid battery right you can see the opposite effect is being happened which is during the process this is the cutout layout or the components of the actual lead acid battery that we are right now using in the vehicle. Here you can see the grid plate is first connected. After that the separators you can see the positive plate pack also the negative plate pack right. The plate packs will be kept and in between that negative plates will be connected and in between all the electrodes there will be one separator right you might have also learned that the number of plates will be different for example if we are using the number of plates of the positive plates are 8 then the negative plates will be 7 we will have an extra positive plate for the better mixture capability right also the separator will be number 7 in that you can see that during the working you can see the electrolyte type sealing is also provided so that it does not flow into the air or it does not evaporate into the air if the battery is kept open it will go or it will evaporate into the air and the loss of the electrolyte will happen in that case so to avoid that we are providing an sealing over the electrolyte also the band will also be provided on above part of our battery cover that band also helps to reduce the evaporation of our electrolyte into the air so this is simply how the lead acid battery works in the case of the casing that you are seeing all the components is been filled and with the terminal on both our batteries the positive electrodes is combined at the positive terminal and all the negative electrodes is combined towards the negative terminal right so in the same manner this lead acid battery works 
and the working of the lead acid battery can be easily understood by the help of this process. You can see that positive cell connection, right? In the figure, you can see that positive cell connection. In that connection, all the positive plates has been combined and that connection is provided at one point. That connection further we will connect with our positive terminal. Same way the negative plates will be combined with a negative cell connection and that will be further connected with our negative terminal. So this is how directly we can convert our positive terminal and negative terminal to our vehicle. Right. So now you can understand the simple working of all the batteries. Next whenever we will understand other batteries we will see about the electrode and the electrolyte that we are using in it and we will see basic how the charging and discharging work but the working or the procedure for the electrolyte will be similar to this battery right so we will not be understanding the working in very much detail of all other batteries right so in this video we saw about the specific energy of the different batteries and we saw about the basic battery that is lead acid battery we saw about the detail working and the detail components of the batteries in the next video we will see about the working of the other batteries and the advantages and disadvantages of the batteries and which of them can be used in the future and which of them we are using right now will be also seen until then Thank you so much.